Um, an extract was prepared from 116. A student used a colorimetric assay to measure the activity of an enzyme in bananas. This is probably going to be catechol oxidase. Um, an extract was prepared from one banana used five times to measure the enzyme activity. Three absorbance regions were taken for each of the five assays. Data collected shown. Okay, the student evaluated the data to be reliable and accurate. What is their evaluation of data like, is it? Okay, right, so they said reliable. Okay, reliable means that basically you have information that you can totally trust because it has been repeated, but most essentially, and this is the really important thing, should be an independent replication. And they used one banana five times. So this is not actually reliable data. Okay, so incorrect because data is not reliable. Um, so we've got incorrect here for not reliable as well. So our oh, next question is, is that data accurate? And the problem is we just can't tell. We don't have a, a standard. We don't have something that we can measure against. We don't have controls. We don't have anything else. We just don't really know. So it's not necessarily accurate. So answer is D. Biological field work can sometimes be more dangerous than lab work. Which of the following would not generally be involved in a risk assessment for carrying out field work safely? Okay, so some of these are things that you would automatically assume are really the risk assessment whole point. So the first thing you do in a risk assessment is you try to identify any hazards. So that's in fact, sorry, let me rub that out because I'm saying that's definitely true. Um, okay, we definitely do need to um, find hazards. Okay, and then you need to say exactly what control measures you want to put in place. C is not true. You wouldn't necessarily assess what safety training records participants have. You may tell them that they need to have that. That's part of the risk assessment is that all participants should have uh, particular safety trainings. Okay, but that's not the risk assessment. That's actually the application of the risk assessment. Consider severity and likelihood of occurring. That is the risk assessment. So these are your main steps in a risk assessment. You know, identify them, consider how severe they are, how likely they are to occur, and then specify what control measures have to be part of it, which may be safety training, um, but it's not assessing it. Okay, so C. Some populations of a species may evolve to become more R-selected or K-selected, depending on the nature of the habitat they, they occupy. Which row in the table shows changes in the factors likely to be associated with a population becoming more K-selected? So I seem to have drawn this several times from multiple choice just this week in a scribble of the graph. Although well, that's a shocking end of the graph there. Okay, so if this is if this is your um, your population curve, um, uh, so we have an exponential one in the middle. This is where our selected are, and up here we have our K selected sitting at kind of carrying capacity. So it says which ones are more likely for something becoming more K selected? K needs stability. Okay, that, that's really important um, because they tend to have a longer lifespan. They, it's just a shorter kind of evolutionary push that you're going to get here in Ks. So envir environmental st stability increasing would push a population or allow a population, you could argue, to become more K-selected. Okay, the number of offspring in a K-selected is smaller. So that's a decrease. So A is your correct answer there. Okay, question 19. The population of the snail, I just love that they keep on giving me lots of ones that I'm not going to try even try to say, vertigo, anti-vertigo, okay, was investigated at a small site in Wales. Equal numbers of quadrat samples were taken in three areas with different dominant vegetation and the number of individual snails in each was recorded. Results are shown in the chart. Okay, so we have varying degrees of grey and basically at the lightest, i.e. white, there is the most um, individuals and at the black there are none. Okay, the information in the chart indicates that species of nail prefers, nail? snail prefers. Right, does it prefer short grass to long grass? Well, here's my short grass over here. Um, and here's my long grass. And you would say, well, there's more individuals, there's more with the 40 or more in the long, and then more of the 8 to 39, and slightly less of the 1 to 7, and slightly, definitely less of the absent. So, no, it does not prefer short grass to long grass, other way around. Okay, irises and rushes to long grass. Here's my irises and, irises and rushes, um, and here's my long grass again. Um, definitely prefers irises and rushes. If you look at this column here, that is much bigger than that one. Um, so, yeah, that's a preference. And just to check, 
Long grass to irises and rushes. Well, we've just said that's not true. And short grass to irises, iris, I can't even say it, irises and rushes. Um, well, we already said that short grass um, was preferable, less preferable to too long. So it can't be that one either. OK, so B. Question 20. Biological fieldwork often requires the estimate of population size for a prey species. One method to use is mark and recapture. We've got this one. So this is your uh, number, population number over first sample marked and then your second sample captured over the ones that were marked when they were recaptured. If the method of marking reduced the camouflage coloration of the species, so this is going to reduce this number. Okay, what effect would this have with this? What effect would this be likely to have on the population estimate? So, on this, if I had skewed the R number here. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to have a lower number than, than that than you would expect. So I am increasing the denominator in a fraction, as it were. Okay, when I'm doing the doing the sum. So basically, I am going to start overestimating my population because I think that I'm getting less recaptured. They must be spread out further. OK, um, and my recapture numbers would be decreased because I have less of them being captured because some of them are being eaten. Um, so C. In the three spine stickleback fish, males have a distinctive red underside in the breeding season, which is not present in females. Territorial males were presented with model fish, some of which had their undersides painted red and some of which were left unpainted. Males showed an automatic attack response to only the red painted models. This attack response behaviour is triggered by. OK, so we are looking at what is causing that to happen. And it's actually it's another really good example of one of these. This is a sign stimulus, um, very specific to the species. Um, it's not sexual dimorphism because that's to do with the males and females and that's not the response, the attack response. It's not sexual selection because that is females um, choosing males according to um, what they're doing, um, which again, this is males affecting what's happening to males. And it's not an autonomous signal because it was a painted model fish. Um, tells you nothing about health or anything like that. So definitely D. Great. Question 22. The list shows three events in meiosis 1. We've got independent assortment, recombination of alleles of linked genes, pairing of homologous chromosomes, the order in which these events occur. Right. Well, bottom line is you've got to start with the pairing. Right? You cannot possibly have recombination or anything else until you have your homologous chromosomes lined up ready to do something. OK, so the first thing you have to do is to pair up your homologous chromosomes, which gets rid of C and D. OK, um, at which point we now have the potential for chiasma forming and then potentially recombination. So we then have recombination. And then finally, these alleles can be not these alleles, sorry, these these pairs can be either this way around or flip them over and go the other way. OK, so then we finally have independent assortment of them. OK, so. S then R then Q. Answer is A. Okay, the graph shows species richness of mollusk population in areas of Fenland. The number of species of mollusks was recorded in several areas as well as the calcium concentration in the Fenland water. At each site the concentration of iron was also measured. Okay, so we've got a high and low iron concentration. Okay, which of the following generalizations can be drawn from the graph? An increase in calcium from 100 to 400 mg per litre increases the species richness. OK, so number of species, we need this to get higher as I go from 100 to 400. This is not really the case. Basically, we have we've just got a flat line. There really there isn't a correlation of it going um, straight up. So no for A. OK, um, high concentration of iron leads to the highest species richness. OK, so here is my high concentration of iron, these ones here. Um, and it says that this leads to the highest concentration of species richness. Um, you're like, well, no, because I've got ones above this with low concentration of iron and a much higher species. So nope. Uh, when both calcium and iron concentrations are high, the species richness is highest. I'm just getting my pen back for that one rather than still drawing with highlighter. OK, so here's my high 
with my calcium and these are my high um, irons same deal these are these are not the highest uh, numbers so not this and an increase in calcium up to 150 megs per litre increases species richness so here's my calcium from here to here and that does look right so the answer is D. 24. New patterns of resistance in, in plasmodium have increased the challenge experienced in the treatment of malaria. Which of the following strategies is least likely to reduce the challenges in the treatment on control of malaria? So you should know that malaria is a vector carried one because we are looking at mosquitoes. So that that's important. Okay, so um, so let's get rid of coordinated vector control because that obviously would be something that is massively important in the control of malaria. Um, development of new culture methods for plasmodium. This is absolutely essential. If we can get this right, then that means that you can do more things about um, all your methods of control. Can you work at vaccines? These are things that will affect the plasmodium. Um, low density housing in malarial areas. That would help because you're then looking at less uh, transmission. Improved sanitation is not to do specifically with malaria in this way um, because really what we're looking at is um, bloodborne transmission via vector okay question 25 last one in the multiple choice which diagram shows the sequence of events in the scientific cycle um really genuinely i did something like this with my first year so it's a bit embarrassing that it's come up at advanced hour but i suppose it's a nice it's the planning cycle so fair enough Okay, so first thing you've got to do is design an experiment, basically. Let's start with design an experiment as an easy way to, to, to start. Design an experiment, uh, gather and analyse your data, which allows you to draw conclusions, which allows you to form a new hypothesis, which is where you started with forming a hypothesis to design an experiment. So yeah, I like A, okay? And just to check um, for C, or let's go down the way, sorry. Design an experiment. Design an experiment from forming a hypothesis is fair enough, but you don't form a new hypothesis after you've designed your experiment. You do it before, um, so that one doesn't work. And you can form a new hypothesis, and then I don't know where we're going to design. That's fair enough. Draw conclusions. You cannot draw conclusions before you have gathered data, so that one doesn't work. And what have we got here? Uh, design an experiment, gather and analyse data, which allows you to form a hypothesis. No, you, you'd form a hypothesis after you had drawn conclusions, which would allow you to then design your experiment. So yeah, he's the only one that works. And that's your multiple choice.